Hi, this is Ben at the House of Horrors, and I'm standing next to um, a roof section with a bunch of defects. And we're gonna go over all the defects, see if you can find them with me at these uh, three tab shingle, asphalt shingle roof. So let's take a look. And this is the roof that we're gonna take a look at. It has a ton of problems, at least 50. And at the House of Horrors, we start with components. So during a home inspection, you don't really get to see the substrate um, and the thickness of it. There's an H-clip, should be installed. A lot of manufacturers recommend it. Some code requires it. And also the drip edge, you never get to see the drip edge really installed. This drip edge has only one fastener in the six feet. Um, and there's underlayment too, so we've got some typical underlayment. Um, it's 30 pound, and we're going to install it improperly with no overlap there at the seams. And there's no nailing at the drip edge. So we're having a lot of fun at this area. You can come by and test your skills. Also uh, train yourself on how to do a really good roof inspection and train your employees. There should be a bigger overlap at the end lap there. And it's not installed properly. So this roof is a typical 412 slope and code doesn't really, code is silent on how to install shingles specifically. So we, we're going with Owens Corning shingles here and on the back of the package um, are actual really good detailed instructions on how to install the shingles properly including the underlayment. So let's go to the left side and look for obvious things like uh, the shingle is not lying flat. It's kind of curled up there. It wasn't really cut well at the edge. Different color shingle tab. That's always an indication of a defect. You should never see flashing exposed. So that's improperly installed. Damage, obviously, to the shingles. Kind of concerned that it's at the corner. It looks like somebody took a hammer to it but always looking for cracked shingles, tears, damage. Looks like my finger's pointing to a, a hammer, an intentional damage. Maybe some uh, someone wants to mark some hail. And um, it's not hail because hail has the granules depressed into the shingle. Um, they're not supposed to be crushed by hail. Crushing of hail granules um, is typically not caused by hail. Some damage there. Looking for some obvious things. Some scuffing and maybe a shoe or a ladder. And a different color shingle tab. That's never good. And this is a great way to um, just Make sure your eye is trained to look for obvious things like this. There's no staggering, right? There's no offset on these shingles. Not sure how this was installed. Ah, you should never have a, a six inch tab in the middle of a field. Typically you'll see an offset on the ends. And this is prone to water penetration because the water will tend to travel in the um, space between the tabs. And in this space you could see maybe a shingle end Look, looking for racking, um, offsetting, so there's a six inch offset, but i um, not sure where there's a, well this is no good either. Shingles should not be overlapping each other. So there's some kind of installation defect here. Never should see exposed fasteners. The heads should not be exposed. They should be covered up by the shingle tab. So this is maybe a, a low nailing or the shingle row is not installed properly. But they sometimes shine in the sun when you're taking a look at the roof surface. And the starter, the manufacturer recommends how to install the starter row to starter shingle. This was kind of installed correctly, but um, the tabs were not um, cut off well. And the starter shingle really should be going all the way to the edge of the um, drip edge. And this is a good place to look for underlayment. Um, there's one layer of felt paper, maybe there should be two, or some ice and water shield because of the cold climate area um, and prone to water 
uh, ice dams and water leaks. And again, that drip edge was not fastened at all. Should be installed about every foot or so. Looking for the fa that fastener there is just installed not even into the substrate. And there are the two underlayment pieces there with no overlap. So that's a defect there. So the starter shingle is really important. This one's actually upside down. So if you had an employee and you wanted to test that employee, um, that's a really good catch. And also the ice and water shield or ice barrier in some climates, that should be installed to a point 24 or 36 inches from the exterior wall line. And the drip edge is damaged uh, flat up against the fascia board here, completely flat. But it should have a, a little form so that the water tension drips off, so it kicks out literally from the flashing uh, fascia board. And kickouts are really important. Um, this is not installed properly. They simply got a piece of step flashing and turned it. Um, so that's not installed properly. It's not an, a particularly uh, effective way of installing kick flashing. Kick flashing, there are certain things you have to keep in, in mind when you're installing kick flashing and looking for it. Just kind of follow how water is shed away. And the kickoff flashing needs to be at a particular angle. Again, exposed step flashing should never be seen at that shingle tab area. There should be an overlap of about two inches from one piece of step flashing to another, which is then um, counter flashed. And um, whoops, that shingle um, is loose, obviously. Not flat, improperly cut. You can even see the cut in the aluminum flashing. And again, not properly installed, and there's no overlap there. And obviously, this is just a, an installation for instructional purposes. You would see counter flashing, underlayment, um, things for the wall uh, to shed water away. Another kick out flashing that's not installed properly. <clears throat> so it's cosmetically wrong, too. Uh, the nail shouldn't be there. Um, you shouldn't really see any fastening nails. Again, that's ex an exposed fastener, a roofing nail. Wrong color shingle, and oh, the step flashing was cut. So now we have a hole through which water can travel. There's no overlap of one step flashing to the next, and this was installed improperly. Water can actually travel behind the step flashing there, and I don't think it's even fastened. So it's kind of fun to find all of these defects to test yourself at the House of Horrors, because we have so many, like this one, a uh, fastener uh, for underlayment is used. Um, and so we're missing proper fastening at the shingle. We can see it here because of the overlap, isn't, and it's not there. So four fasteners per shingle by the recommend, uh, manufacturer's recommendations in high wind areas get six. So it's, it's there, that's improperly nailed. It should be there below the self-adhesive strip. This is a high nail, it's above that. That's within the um, self-adhesive strip and that's incorrect. Uh, it's a good one inch from the edge, but it's in the wrong area. It should be below the self-adhesive strip according to the manufacturer's um, instructions. And that's a good fastener there. So fastener location, as home inspectors, we really don't look for fastener locations because it's, it's typically impossible to pull up shingle tabs like this, um, like we're doing here. But we should know, whoop, that's a six inch offset in the middle of the roof field, a six inch tab, you never should see that. Um, and that's a good fastening there. And oh, the shingle tab, well, this must have curled up and broken off. Maybe there was a high wind um, along the roof, and when there's a, a high wind pressure um, going over the gable, um, there could be a tab uplift. That tab could crack if brittle and fall right off. So we're looking for bad fastening. Um, again, in between the shingle tabs, you should never see a fastener like this. 
Um, no fastening there, no fastening there. Um, no fastening. I don't think this shingle even has any fasteners. So that's a defect as well. So this row was missed. Got a fastener there. There's a fastener there, but uh, something. there's some shingle overlapping. The ends of the shingle tab, uh, the strip shingle, are overlapping each other. So that's not, that's a defect. There's a fastener there, but it's not snug and tight. Um, it's out. Um, it's lifted up. So you want a good straight penetration and flush with the surface of the shingle with your fastener. Um, you don't want it underdriven or overdriven, which cuts into the shingle, and you don't want it at an angle either. There's a fastener there at the wrong place, and also um, it's at an angle. And it's not snug. So when you go through the House of Horrors and looking for defects like this, uh, the fastener on the left is high, there's a space between the shingle tabs, there's a tear in the material, overdriven fastener, and wrong type of fastener being used, going from left to right. Yep. So you can test yourself, uh, and you can have some fun. We can time you to see how fast you can find all the defects. And um, we have all the answers as well. There's a fastener in between two shingle tabs trying to hold it down with the uh, 3 8 inch diameter head. Overdriven, a big hammer, 32 ounce hammer, I hit that one. Um, and uh, you can time yourself and have a lot of fun, see how fast you can find all the defects. And we'll give you the, all the answers at the end of your experience as well. So the House of Horrors is kind of fun. So we're having a little fun here with this small roof section with about 50 roof defects. And we break it down into components as well. So maybe some of you haven't even seen what a proper kickout flashing looks like. And this is a piece of step flashing. It's very simple and it should be installed properly. And this is an H clip. It goes in between um, a bay of the roof rafters to hold the plywood ends. And uh, there's the 3 8 inch minimum uh, head of a roofing nail, a corrosion resistant, typical roof nail. And there should be at least 3 8 of an inch thickness at the plywood sheathing here for this installation. And we're pretty good there. Got it. And also, um, fasteners are important. So this is what a, an underlayment fastening looks like, the grip tights. So I hope you had fun finding defects at this roof section at the House of Horrors in Boulder, Colorado. Come on by, the doors are open.